Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I'm back with the preview of Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 7. This is the finale of Season 7. I'm so pumped. And this episode's going to be very interesting because I don't really have a firm grasp on what's going to happen. In the preview, we got a very focused look at the meeting in the Dragon Pit. And we see a lot of things happen. We see the Unsullied and Dothraki arrive at King's Landing. And I'm sure Daenerys' two dragons are arriving also. And this will really ensure that Cersei stays in line. She's not going to do anything stupid and betray Daenerys when she has Unsullied Dothraki and dragons at her gates. So I think at the start of the episode, we're going to see Daenerys arrive with Jon, Tyrion, Davos, Missandei, the Hound, Theon, Brienne, Varys, Jorah, and Pod. And there are some characters missing, and I'll get to them later. And they're going to be greeted by Cersei, Jaime, the Mountain, Euron, Kyburn, and Bronn. And I think there are a couple of plot points we're really going to see in these interactions. First of all, we're going to see them touch on the threat of the White Walkers. That's why they went to go capture a white in the first place. And in the last episode, the Hound is clearly responsible for this white. He's going to be the one that brings it into King's Landing. And we see him in the trailer with the crate behind him with a sword. And I believe in this scene, the Hound is going to prove that this white cannot be killed. And they will prove to Cersei and her entourage that White Walkers are most definitely real. And we hear Jon say some words that only one war matters, and that's the Great War. But the most interesting part of this diplomatic approach is that it really makes no sense for Cersei in the endgame. She wants to be queen, and she knows that Daenerys also wants to be queen. And if she allies herself with Daenerys to defeat the White Walkers, it's still going to end with her bending the knee. And she realizes that, and Tyrion is smart enough to know that Cersei will not negotiate with Daenerys. She will not side with Daenerys. And she most definitely does have a plan in her back pocket to betray them. And if she doesn't betray them at the Dragon Pit, which I don't think she will, I think she's going to let the threat of the White Walkers try and take out her enemies. She will probably agree with Daenerys and sign a pact, but betray them. Because she said it best to Jaime, she needs to fight like their father would. And right now they're backed into a corner. They got the gold to the Bank of Bravos, and now they're waiting for their loan. They're waiting for gold. They're waiting for the Golden Company. And they need a bigger fleet for Euron Greyjoy. So all Cersei's trying to do is buy time. And trying to strike a deal with Tyrion and Daenerys seems like a good way to start buying time. But another issue I think they're going to touch on is the Sand Snakes and Yara. I think Daenerys will naturally want her allies back. She will want Yara Greyjoy. She'll want Alaria and Tyene Sand. And I actually think that Cersei's going to refuse her. I think she's going to say that she keeps Alaria and Tyene Sand because they killed her daughter, and she hopes that Daenerys would understand. But I think at this point, Tyene is going to be dead, and Alaria is going to be tortured to fuck. So it's a debate whether we'll actually see them next episode or not. But I'm sure that something has happened to Yara. Either she was killed, or she was silenced. Her tongue was cut out. And I think that explains this shot here, where Theon is at the beach, and he's clearly reacting to something. And I think it's because he lost a part of his sister, or his sister completely. But I personally hope that Yara is alive, but I hope that she was tortured like Theon. And I think that would be a really good story arc between the two siblings, both of them to be tortured to their core. And I think it would be interesting for them to tell the story that Yara is actually more tortured than Theon, and Theon has to step up to the plate to rule. And I think it would be great for the Iron Islands at the end of this whole show to be run by two people, Theon and Yara, and they both have different strengths. Yara could rule, but be silenced, and could have children as heirs and Theon could rule through communication. They both will have different strengths. But I also think that the whole point of this Dragon Pit sequence is to have a lot of character interactions. I think we're going to see a lot of great interactions between a lot of characters. We're going to see Tyrion, Cersei, and Jaime most definitely interact. And I think it will be a very emotionally driven scene. Because Tyrion totally betrayed their family, but it was so justified for him to do so. We also have the two Clegane brothers, the Hound and the Mountain. And I personally believe that the Hound has come a long way. He hates his brother. And a lot of his anger and sadness originates from the Mountain himself. But I actually think that the Hound will feel sad for his brother. And he'll be angry with Cersei using him as a slave. And no, I don't think we're going to see Clegane Bowl. I think we're just going to see an overall sadness with the Hound. Because he's lost his brother, but it's even worse. He's being used as a slave. And then there's the interaction between Euron and Theon, and I think that Yara Greyjoy is definitely going to pop up in some kind of interaction between these two. But then there's a ton of character interactions that I would love to see, like Jon and Cersei. 
because John doesn't know Cersei very well, but he has a lot to hate about her. So I would love to see how characters like this handle this situation. But moving on, I think we're going to get a lot at Winterfell also. First of all is the drama between Sansa and Arya. I found it interesting because in the last episode, Sansa forced Brienne to go to King's Landing. And to me, it seemed like more of a move to get Brienne out of Winterfell than it was to get Brienne to represent her at King's Landing. Littlefinger made it clear that Brienne would be the one to protect the sisters from each other. And Sansa made sure to send her away, almost as if Sansa is planning to do something against Arya. But there are a lot of plot points that confuse me. Arya gave Cat's Paw to Sansa and walked away. So at this point, I don't know if Arya is trying to set up Littlefinger. I don't know if Sansa is trying to set up Littlefinger. And I don't know if Littlefinger has actually pitted Arya and Sansa against each other. So this is something that I actually have no answers for, but I'm sure it'll end in Littlefinger's demise. I think moving forward, we have six episodes to tell the complete story of Game of Thrones, and I think that has to be told without Littlefinger. This season, we've really seen him on the last of his ropes. He can only do so much, and I think the time for politics is over, and I think that's going to end with his death. And we hear it in the trailer. Sansa says the lone wolf dies and the pack survives. And I think in this episode, we're really going to see the pack come together, and that is all of the Stark children. But then there's the other wolf, and that's Bran. And I hope we get a lot of things with Bran in this episode. I hope we get a vision. I would love to see a visual representation of Rhaegar marrying Lyanna Stark in Dorne. That was mentioned by Gilly in episode 5. But I'm confident that Sam is going to arrive at Winterfell to see Bran. Because the last thing that Sam heard from the Citadel was that Bran knows that the Night King is on the move. Sam knows that Bran is alive and he knows that he is at Winterfell and he knows that he has vital information with the White Walkers and I believe that Sam thinks that that is the best place for him to go to push his mission in stopping the White Walkers. So it only seems natural that the pieces are in place to finally tell us that Jon is a legitimized Targaryen because of the piece of information that was dropped regarding Prince Rhaegar as well as Bran wanting to speak with Jon throughout this season. But then I think we're going to end the show with one final threat, and I think we're going to see that white dragon Viserion finally in action. So I think we're going to see the Night King go to Eastwatch or Castle Black and just decimate it, and hopefully we see the wall come down this episode. I really wanted it to come down last season, but it really makes sense for it to come down this season. The Night King finally got what he wanted. He got his weapon of mass destruction, a dragon. And I think now he's going to be on the attack. But the only question is, who is going to be in trouble here? If he goes to Castle Black, it's only natural that we're going to see Dolores Ed. And we got that foreshadow with John and Dolores Ed, where John tells Ed not to let the wall fall down while he's gone. And I think we're going to see that happen, and we're going to see Ed die. But I wonder if we're going to see that happen with Eastwatch. We don't know what characters are there. We know that Beric Dondarrion, Tormon, and Gendry aren't at the Dragon Pit. And John specifically ordered Tormon and the Wildlings to watch Eastwatch. So I hope that this isn't the end of Tormond in this episode. But some of these characters could be in another place. Gendry could actually be in Dragonstone. He could be there mining. And we see Theon looking upset on the beaches. These beaches to me personally look like Dragonstone. So maybe Theon ends the season at Dragonstone. And Gendry ends there also mining for Dragonglass. But I'm not 100% sure, but I am sure that we're going to get some destruction at the wall. We may see the death of Tormund and Dolores Ed, and potentially Beric Dondarrion. And I think we're going to see Jon and Daenerys and the whole crew coming north to Winterfell, hopeless to do anything. And we're going to be left on a cliffhanger. And we're really going to be left wondering, will Jon and Daenerys make it back in time to save Winterfell before the Night King makes his way there himself? But that is it, everybody, for my preview of the finale of Game of Thrones Season 7. Please let me know what you think in the comments section down below. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.